Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. You've been warned to change to another station, uh, but it's too late now. You're listening to the Bear Wozniak uh, Adventure, where we go deep in the, with the Holy Spirit. We believe at Deep Adventure Ministries that the most radical thing you can do in life is abandon yourself to the wildness of God's will. And we challenge men to go deeper with God, and we remind men to stop apologizing for being a man you're called to heroic virtue you have the you have the spiritual and physical dna uh to to rise up and to fight the good fight and stand for uh our lord jesus christ and protect you and your family especially now during this year of saint joseph we'll be right back with the bear wozniak adventure welcome to the bear wozniak adventure kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Today we're going to be, we have Dr. John Aquaviva with us. He's a PhD a professor of exercise physiology at Wingate, and his, his focus is on body image, health, and, and virtue. And we're going to be digging kind of deep into this whole area. You know, the Lord created us. I have my commentary out my of the by the early church fathers. It's several, maybe 30 volume set of their commentary on the scriptures. And right there in Genesis, it said God created men and women. He made them male and he made them female and he made them for each other and that, that were different. And so men, uh, I want to I let you know, you can stop apologizing for being a man. There's something in a man that, that just urges him on to be a hero. You know, a saint is someone the church says has exercised heroic virtue. And so you men out there that uh, feel like you have to apologize for your existence, you can stop doing that now. We need to have men who are bold, who are strong. And we don't mean macho men. We mean men that are willing to lay down their lives for the people that God's called them to serve, to lay down their lives in, 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 um, in, in servant leadership. There's a song out now, and I think it's on the Western station. My wife loves Western music, and I do too now. <laughs> She's gotten me hooked on it. And I think the song goes, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone? You know, I'm a big Louis L'Amour fan. I don't know if any of you men out there have ever... If you've, young men, if you've never read a Louis L'Amour Western, uh, you got to get, get one of his books, or you can listen to it on, on Audible. But Louis L'Amour's editor, Louis L'Amour wrote over 100 Westerns. He was a great storyteller and almost, and his books always focused on virtue and always a manly, a manly hero who focused on virtue. Not perfect man, but a man who focused on virtue. Uh, and he, I was fortunate because his last editor was my editor for my first book that became an Amazon bestseller, um, Deep, Deep in the Wave, A Surfing Guide to the Soul. And so my new book that I'm working on, 12 Rules of Manliness, it uses titles from Louis L'Amour's books um, as, a, as a kind of a lead-in to where have all the cowboys gone. We need men uh, today. When you, we, Cindy and I love to watch old westerns because the men were men in those days. They were bold, they were strong, they were humble, and, um, and we need that in our day today. And we're going to talk, we're going to go a little bit deep without John Aquaviva when he comes online and we're going to talk story about physical health, uh, vir a virtuous strength, and we're going to talk about the, the whole uh, gender confusion area that's been taking place now. John Aquaviva, Dr. John Aquaviva, aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Hey Bear, thank you for having me on. It's great to be here. It was good seeing you the other day and uh, I guess last month or two months ago in the, in uh, Charlotte for the right. regional men's conference. How how did what was the fallout of all of that? I thought it was really positive. I, I especially thought it was good, despite the pandemic and the fact that a lot of people have been staying away from church. But that was a great example of people need fellowship. People are hungry for God. People are hungry for. I think situations in which they can just feel really comfortable being a guy. They don't have many opportunities to do that. And that conference just totally welcomes that. And 
that's one of the reasons why we brought you in and there was just a bunch of really good speakers and I heard nothing but positive things from it. In fact, I got an actual guest on the show as a result of a gentleman who wrote a book who was in attendance there, had great things to say, former athlete himself and he was just a great witness and he was just one of the many people I met that gave me energy that day at that men's conference. But well, you really better put me, in, put me in touch with him too. Maybe we can have him on my show. But you know, the thing about yeah. John, when I when I was with you is that when you know, when you're with John Aquaviva, the first impression you get is that you're with a man. There's a strength there. There's a solidness there. There's a clarity there. And you know that you're with a man. And there's certain men that I know like that, that when you're with them, you know everything's gonna be good. everything's gonna be okay. There's just that sense that uh, that everything's gonna be okay. And that's the I know my daughter. Every now and then she'll text me and say, "Hey, Dad, will you tell me that everything's gonna be okay?" That's what men do. We may we're the protectors. You know, this is the year of Saint Joseph, John. And uh, I was talking with Stephen Ray, Doctor. Uh, I call him Doctor Stephen Ray, even though he's not a doctor. You are, but <laughs> I call you John. <laughs> but I've been to uh, the, the the hotel in Jerusalem where there's the uh, the uh, statue of Jesus, yeah, uh, laying uh, in the same position as a shroud of Turin because that's a three dimensional image. And Jesus was ripped, and so was Joseph. Don, Father Don Calloway has this beautiful picture of Joseph standing and holding his hand out, like saying don't come any further you know he was protecting his family jesus and joseph worked with rock they were probably more uh stonemasons than they were carpenters because if you've ever been to israel you know there's no there's no wood all the houses except the prime minister's house is made out of rock so hmm. jesus was strong he was gnarly and in this year of saint joseph let's remember men that when people are with us they should feel like everything's going to be okay unless they have bad intentions, and then they should feel like they need to walk away. John, talk to us about what's going on these days. There seems to be so much uh, gender confusion. There seems to actually be a diabolical agenda. Yeah, I, I think there is. The, um, th there's been a great level of confusion that's brought on by a few loud people. And, um, it, you know, it's one thing for the, the culture, for politics and so forth to allow and to even encourage people to transform themselves from a guy to a girl or a girl to a guy. But it's it's creeped into my world. You know, I, I uh, teach exercise physiology. I'm a former athlete. I've coached athletes. I currently put athletes on plans to help them improve in their own game, whatever their event is or whatever their sport is. But our culture is starting to at least attempt to embrace uh, a problem within the world of sport, and that is allowing people that were men uh, to become that have become women through what's called uh, hormonal therapy and allow them to compete against women. And there, it's been allowed at the high school level, and it's allowed well, at the college level. Well, let me level ask you a question. So when you say it, it, they've had men become women, you mean they no longer have an, an XY chromosome DNA? Uh, well, yeah, you and I, <laughs> very good. I love the way you said that. No, that's one of the jokes I've always made. And actually, I, I don't make a joke of it. I, but it, there's a little bit of facetiousness in me right. when I say, if a guy becomes a woman, does that mean he has a great chance to have breast cancer? If a woman becomes a man, does that mean that his greatest risk in life is heart disease? And of course we can't change those because of the chromosome and the, the DNA nature of each sex. And we have to respect that. And that's one of the things the US Catholic bishops wanna do. That's one thing that popes over the centuries have wanted to do is to protect this, the gender differences and the sexual differences. And it's creeped into the world of sport and thankfully, there are 30 different states that have put forward bills to disallow, at least at the high school level, transgender women from competing against, you know, biological I, girls. I, yeah, I just can't even I, I, I don't even like to say a man who, who has become a woman, a man who's made who's who's it's an immutable it's an immutable fact that they're male, that they're male. That's right. and, and, and in Genesis, the, the Bible says God made them male and That's female. Right. He didn't say he may, you know, he didn't say there aren't aberrations here and there, just like someone can, I'm not going to go into details about that, but um, this whole, this whole arena uh, is, 
is is tragic what's what's happening when the world calls what is good evil and what is evil good and i just know i don't know a lot about this subject but i know i i worked in environments of an environment once when there were there were a lot of uh, uh gay men uh involved in in this uh in this in a in an outreach and most of them had been imprinted when they were young they had been abused and so we're afraid to say that that these people may need some sort of um, help and we yeah. want to just um, turn turn everything on its head and say that you can be become something that scientifically you can't try right. so what's what's the follow oh you know what John we got to take a break okay. when we get back let's talk about what let's talk about what the the permutations of all this is in our society the confusion that it, that it brings we're talking with dr john aquaviva he is um, a professor at wingate university in exercise physiology isn't that cool don't you all I, I wished i had gotten to become that smart and we've had him on our show before we rarely have a returning guest uh and we're going to so we're going to talk more about this subject and also about just getting uh if a man's going to be a man he needs to be physically fit it's it's just just a fact and so we're going to talk about that too when we get right back with dr john aquaviva we'll be right back with more of the bear wozniak adventure hey man i don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter you get free video content including the bear wozniak radio show video version on youtube before it even airs on ewtn and you can follow us on all of our social media go to deepadventure.com and subscribe get your free stuff and if you're watching on youtube don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell don't miss out is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite the men out there. So many men are isolated, and actually they're lonely. Uh, they feel like they need to kind of hold up a certain image to the world of being a tough guy or being somehow above it all. Uh, and what happens is they tend to isolate themselves because they know it's not true. We would like to invite men and invite the, the mama bears out there to encourage their men to uh to join uh to do join bear's man cave we're talking to shandy burke out there and her husband william william i want you to join the man cave he lives in florida beautiful couple uh they homeschool their children but the man cave is for the is for those men that feel like uh they want to go deeper with the lord and want to become to grow in manliness and we call it it's similar to the cave of Adullam where the, the misfits uh, of the world kind of uh, the men showed up that were running from the law, owed money and, uh, and, and, and were on the run. They joined David in this huge cave in uh, they can hold as many as 400 men, uh, the cave of Adullam. And God began to form them into the mighty men of valor. In fact, I don't think it was just it isn't just that God formed them, but they formed each other. You know, iron sharpens iron. And that's why we've created the man cave. So you can come to the man cave, deepadventure.com, join the cave. We give you access to a lot of different things. All of the all of the long ride home videos, early access to all of our radio sh shows. Uh, and we give you access to a secret Facebook group. And then we have Zoom video meetups. In fact, we're having one uh, this weekend, every couple of weeks. And we challenge and encourage and form each other. And then these men begin to develop their own. We look at their gifts and their own their own talents and abilities. We begin to see them moving out in their in their ministry. So men, you don't have to be alone anymore. You can come to the cave. Go to deepadventure.com. Click on the tab. Dr. John Aquaviva, a PhD in exercise physiology. I'm just going to open up the mic to you. Tell us about what's on your heart about this whole transgender confusion. But I don't want to hear it when a man becomes a woman. I'd say when a man tries to become a woman because it. it's just not possible. Yeah, the one thing I find interesting about this topic um, is often when there's a discussion about 
this attempt to switch uh, sexes, they rarely, if ever, bring in a physiologist. In fact, I've never once heard a conversation had where a physiologist is brought in to discuss why this is so problematic. I have a textbook that we use. In fact, uh, in fact, uh, I was going to grab it, but uh, it's a little out of reach. But let me just make the point of this. It's about a 500 page textbook. It's called The Physiology of Exercise and Sport. There are numerous chapters in there, and one chapter alone, Bear, is called The Sex Differences in Performance. And they go on for close to 20 pages, 19 pages to be specific, on the anatomical and physiological differences between a man and a woman. And this is my concern when it comes to sport. I think there are social and cultural distortions and distorted views that people have. I think you touched on that, that we should address the fact that people who want to switch sexes, it, it needs to be addressed from a, an emotional and psychological standpoint. But from a practical view, when people that were boys the year before or men the year before now want to compete against women, that's where I want to step in. And I think that's where the authority is, is people who study exercise physiology, the anatomical and physiological differences between the two. Let me just use two examples. There's a list this long, Bear, but let me just use two examples. One is blood volume. If you take a man and a woman of the same height, the man has a greater volume of blood. And this is important for two primary reasons. One, that means he'll carry more oxygen than the girl will, the woman would. The other one is they will also transport CO2, a compound that is potentially dangerous if in high amounts. And of course, as you know, from a basic uh, understanding of the human body, that's why we breathe 10 to 12 times per minute at rest, to take in oxygen and to expel CO2. And when you have a greater blood volume, as men do, that means they have a better ability to transport oxygen and expel CO2. The other difference is muscle size. There are There's a list this long on just muscle size in particular. For instance, if a guy has a muscle and a girl has a muscle, the muscle is going to be bigger in the guy. So therefore, he's going to be able to generate more force, more power. But also within that muscle, Bear, are compounds, structures called mitochondria. And mitochondria ultimately create ATP, which creates energy. And men have more of that. And those are just two basic physiological differences between the man and the woman. And people try to level the playing field and say, we just want to be fair to these transgender women. And of course, what they're really doing is they're being incredibly unfair to the other 99.9% of people that are competing in these sports. And those are biological girls. We need to take a real big look at this. What I think this does, it's not its not even so much it, that issue is is kind of um brings into focus that there really is a difference between a man and a woman uh, that this of issue course. is is it brings it into focus but you know i'll tell you something uh when i want to learn how to do a really good golf swing i have found looking at women because they're using technique more sure. than power and right. particularly uh, 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 the, the the Japanese women that are so great on the golf course here in Hawaii, we have so many of them uh, that are such great golfers. I watch them and I go, look, look at what they look at how far they're able to hit a ball just with technique. Now they're not going to be able right. to outdrive a, a stronger male, but right. but but the, I'm saying they have great athletic ability. But however, um, it's interesting. I was I, ha I golf with with my son and three of his good friends. And we were out, or two of his good friends, and we were out golfing the other day. And I'm so proud of these young men. And I affirm them when I'm with them. I always make a point to pray with them on the 10th tee. But when, when we got to the tee box, the first tee box, or one of the tee boxes, I go, look, there's the blue tee box and the white tee box, and then the red tee box. And what is the red tee box called? That's the women's tee box. I mean, there's an acknowledgement that even if a woman has superior technique, a man that has a similar technique is going to usually outdrive her on the tee box, and right. so they're, they're. I mean, right there, it's just so interesting. What that's going to change? I guarantee you, they're going to start calling it the amateurs' tee box or something else. But but hopefully right. not. But it, but it, it underlines the fact that there is a difference. And so then, what what issues does this percolate up for us? 
Well, it uh, it distorts ultimately God's plan, right? Mm. I mean, God God had a plan. You referenced this already twice in Genesis. He didn't say he created humans. He created man and women who are both human, but they are different. And clearly there are anatomical differences. And all ultimately what this does bear, this confuses us and this pulls us from the truth. And I really believe that there are a, a fraction of people who are intentional in trying to drive people away from God. And of course, you and I would agree that that's devil's work, right? This is one of the most basic foundational plans of God that is known. In fact, right, this is this is the one thing about what's called theology of the body, which you've already referenced. And I wrote two of my books based on that, on body image, that God has a plan and God fully uh, recognized the differences between the two and and even if you are not theologically educated even if you're not a religious person bear if you have a woman standing in front of you and a man standing in front of you there are incredibly vast differences in just looking at them not to mention if you were to talk to them if you were to investigate how they feel about certain things in general, what their interests are. There are vast differences between the two. And ultimately, we've taken a truth that God has given us and distorted that. And I think that's pulled us away ultimately from getting closer to God. Because if we deny it, then we're denying one of the most basic, fundamental facts that God has presented to us and that there are men and women in this world. You know, it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful how God made men and women you know, so unique and so different. You know, men are made out of mud, right? It says he scooped out the clay and he made That's a right. man. You know, we're, we're kind of more earthy. We're, we're not as highly advanced, I think, as highly. Uh, well, I think when, when, when I've heard someone say once when God took the rib out of the man and formed the woman, the woman is more highly distilled. It's like the, the DNA of the human being has been filtered through the man and the mud and all that was, was filtered out. And you, what you're left with is this, is this, uh, this, this beautiful, wise, uh, prudent, um, strong woman. Uh, but we're different. I know like... Uh, when I when I tandem surf with a, with a woman, uh, I know how powerful a woman can be. I know how courageous a woman can be, and I know how beautiful a woman can be. How bold a woman can be. We're not we're not contrasting virtue, but there is a there is a very different male mind mindset uh, versus the you know when we tandem surf. I've never seen a woman go out and tandem surf and lift a, lift a woman. You know, tandem surfing is where I lift a woman. Right. Uh, it's the men that lift the women. And so that's our role as men is to lift women up. You know, men don't do that anymore. When I go out and tandem surf, my role is to lift her, protect her. If, if, you, if your tandem partner gets hurt, you're no longer a tandem surfer. You're, you're, yeah. Your career is over. My, my job is to lift her to protect her, to have my wits about me. If someone drops in on me, I've got my shins are, are beat up from people dropping in on me while I have a woman in a lift and I'm just taking the hit and surfing through them. Um, and ultimately, John, I display her beauty. I, I'm there to allow her beauty and strength to show. And that's what men need to do. We need to lift women and, and a man should be able to inspire in a woman her confidence in him and her ability to trust him. If you can't inspire that, you need to look inside and get your act together. We're talking with Dr. John Aquaviva. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We'll be right back. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to NotreDameFCU.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. Yes, we mean you. Go to deepadventure.com and check out Bear's Man Cave, a men's only Facebook group. 
Join the pack with other men as they challenge and inspire one another to manly virtue. Plus, you can dialogue with us in our regular video chat meetups. Plus, get your exclusive content. Join at deepadventure.com. That's deepadventure.com. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. <clears throat> when we were gone, Dr. John Aquaviva said, good stuff, Bear. Uh, and that's what we should be doing, man. We should be doing the stuff. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to do the stuff. Uh, Jesus, Jesus made it pretty clear what we're supposed to do. We're not supposed. If you've been sitting in your comfortable lazy boy, I mean, what, that's a perfect name for it, right? If you watch sports instead of do sports, um, God's got a challenge for you. Doc, Dr. John Aquaviva and I've been talking about the whole area of gender confusion, but let's talk now, Do, Dr. Aquaviva, about the whole soft, that softness that we see in so many men now. Um, you know, and, and, and what we can do about it. We don't have to sit in our lazy boys. And I want to tell you st- something, John. I just went through, I'm, I'm, you, you know, being a, a world-class athlete, I guess, in my sport, I um, keep myself usually pretty physically fit. And I don't know, when you saw me even two months ago, I was not fit. But I'd just gone through cancer radiation treatment and multiple infections and, and a ripped bicep muscle. And um, and thankfully, I was in pretty good shape before all that happened because I could afford to take a hit and keep on going. But now that I'm now I'm coming back, you know, during the time of that radiation treatment, I had to uh, I, to settle my stomach. I started eating carbs more than I should, you know, and things like that. So my muscle, I looked at myself. I don't see the muscle. Where did it go? I looked at fat beginning to, to grow. Uh, because I couldn't do my normal, you know, physical fitness that I do because because of, of all that I went through, and I just and and, and 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 it made me really appreciate what it was like to to be an athlete and to be fit. And now I'm battling back. I was talking with Doug Barry yesterday about this. I'm a I'm every athlete has a discipline to their life. Every Christian should have a discipline to their life, and, and you know that's what where the word disciple comes from. To be physically fit, to be mentally fit, to be spiritually strong. And so when men join the man cave, I referenced it earlier, one of the first things most of the men do is they start getting on an eating and, and fitness regimen with us. Because if you're going to be a, a man, you have to be fit. Don't, you know, this soft, I see in Hawaii people come here, John, and the men's shoulders are rolled forward like this because they've been playing computer games. They've been sitting on the couch watching football, but they come to Hawaii and some of them get bold enough to kind of say, hey, can I, to one of my friends, they'll say, you know, when we give surf lessons, I'll have them, have them go to my friend Micah. And they go out and they have that experience of going outside their comfort zone and they feel the blood rushing through them. And they're like, I can live a larger life. They've been, they've been boxed in. They're living too small of a life. God loves the material world. We're not Gnostics. Jesus even became man, and he, like we said earlier, he was ripped. So was Paul, anyone who lived in that day and age. Mary had to walk probably 15 minutes every day to go get water. She was carrying heavy water back to the house. She was fit, too, I guarantee you. So can we turn the subject to how a soft male who's let himself kind of go physically, and I guarantee if you if you let yourself go physically, you're depressed, and you're not, and you, and you don't have that, that confidence that if I can do this, I can do anything. What is your message to that soft male that needs to get in shape? And it's not like uh, a year from now, I'm going to be in shape. There's something really powerful that happens about the 7th, 14th, 21st day of being on a fitness regimen. There's something good that happens in your soul because you're pursuing virtue. It's not just endorphins. It's something in your relationship with God. You're not denying how he made you. You're giving, you're saying, Lord, thank you for this body. It's the temple of the Holy Spirit. Let me, uh, let, let's build something good together. Let's, let's, you, you were a rock builder. You were a technon, Jesus in scripture. You built in rock. I want to be called Rocky. I want to have a Rocky. Uh, and look, John, when I see you on TV or when I, when I, when I met you in person, you look fit to me. You look like, you know, like, you look like a man. So can you help us get men on a path now towards fitness? Yeah, there's a couple messages I would like to 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 share. And uh, you, you, you know, gave me a good diving board to jump from uh, because 
ultimately it's this and this is the basis of my message and it's clearly you know the rock that you've started to carve out as well and that is god has given us this great gift and this gift is the human body Mm -hmm. and while it can do a lot of things right it 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 allows us to think and be creative it allows us to be creative and do things with our hands and so forth but one of the things that's very evident coming from an exercise physiologist is the body responds to exercise it wants it fitness plans it wants it it. wants it desperately right and this is this is the basis of the whole thing in other words if god did not want us to quote get in shape or be fit then he would not have programmed the body to do that and Mm. i mean that literally the body is programmed to increase in bone density when we put weight against it the muscle is designed to be stronger maintain its good shape or good strength when we put weight against it the heart is designed to grow stronger and bigger and pump more blood and develop more blood when we do aerobic conditioning for instance the body responds to these plans and that alone is worth investigating and it answers the question of why should we be fit but I'll take it a step further, Bear. I remember two Christmases ago, we were cleaning up at the end of a Christmas day and uh, some of these toys were going in a big bucket that we had in the toy room. And our four-year-old, who was certainly old enough to understand this concept, took one of the toys and threw it across the room and tried to get it into the bucket. And the first thing my wife said in her wisdom was, hey, Pop-Pop spent a lot of money to give you this toy. You should take good care of that. And I want to extend that to our bodies. God created us in his, in his image, as it's always said, but also it's a great creation of his. It is his masterpiece. We tend not hey, to appreciate man. it. What a well because- powerful statement. Say that again. It is well, his masterpiece. It is. We are his masterpiece. And the only reason we tend not to appreciate it is that there's billions of us. And so we tend to think, well, how important can I be? But the fact is, there's only one of you. Right. And so we tend to we tend, but we still tend to go, well, I'm just one of many people that he has created. And I want to extend that story from my kid throwing that toy across the room. And that is we should take care of his greatest masterpiece. God has given us this. And it makes sense that we were to take care of it better than every other thing. And you know, as well as anybody, Bear, we take care of our sports equipment, our cars, our house, far better. Our computers, our phones, far better than we take care of our own bodies. And talk about something that is ultimately, in the overall scheme of things, not as important. In fact, it's going to have no bearing. When, When we go to heaven, when we go meet our creator he's not going to ask us how many coats of wax do we have on our second third car let me me ask you this question dr john aquaviva is our guest this is how important your body is it's going to be with you forever you know you're you're not just going to die and go to heaven as a soul but there'll be a day when your body is resurrected this is how much value god puts on your human body and it's 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 it you know it took there's a star the cosmic seals and ash song that goes we are stardust the fact is we are it took three generations of stars to create us um the fire the furnace burning and creating the first of the chemical uh the chemical items on the chemical chart and then and then the next then it exploding and then another another cycle of going into a star and then a third cycle my my son uh uh, jeremiah was was talking to me yesterday about that too about how 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 it seems like the whole universe was created just so that i could exist there's that there's that um that that arrow that was shot 13 billion years ago directed at john aquaviva becoming a human being god knew you before you were knitted in your mother's womb your human body is a great gift and how we uh share that how we how we uh it was we say in hawaii kuleana how we take stewardship over that uh is a gift back to the lord and it's also gives us the strength and ability to be um to be all that God wants us to be, especially, you know, when I used to fight, you know, I've trained in, I have a couple different black belts. Um, 
I used to win, not be, I mean, I have certain level of skill, but I used to live just because I could outlast people. I used to win because I could outlast people. I had enough cardio sure. that I could outlast people. John, how can people find you? They can find me a couple different ways at Wingate University, j.aquaviva at wingate.edu or through my website, um, catholicbodyimage.com or through Carolina Catholic Radio, my show, Faith in Sports. So any one of those ways. Well, let's, let's, let's just give them one that they can really remember. The, the, what is the body image one called? catholicbodyimage.com yeah you can go there to find out more uh, from Dr. John Aquaviva we want to invite our mama bears to come to the to the deepadventure.com website and join with us you know we know that mama bears are not always sweet and cuddly I used to have a cabin by Glacier Park in in, uh, in uh, Montana and uh, it was the mama bears that were the known to be more fierce than the mountain lions, more fierce than the the, the, the wolves who had been coming down from Canada. Uh, you don't mess with a mama bear, and we appreciate and respect all the prayers and your and your financial donations, and how you bring your men to our show. And remember, women, the show isn't just meant for men, because we knew from the very, very, very beginning that if the show was n- a gritty enough for men, that the women would already be there. And there's a lot of there's so much content that's that you uh, relate to as well. But bring your men because it's something that they, they'll be able to relate to because it's a little bit different. It's something that uh, men go, oh, yeah, I, he's speaking to my soul. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. is a warning. The Bear Wozniak adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We're talking with Dr. John Aquaviva. John, what's the name of your radio show in, in, on, on the EWTN station in, in the Carolinas? It is called Faith and Sport. It's on every day. We, we do it. Uh, we tape it on Monday. It airs on Monday afternoon. And then it's played literally every day um, throughout the week well, at can, different times. Can people uh, to find it some other way if they don't live in the Carolinas? They can, of course, they can go to carolinacatholicradio.org and they can hit the on demand button. If you have that app, you can listen to the podcast. And if you ju- you can just, as you know, every radio station now has a listen live button. It doesn't matter where you are. In fact, in the world, we had, I remember a guy wrote us from Nigeria. Did he, uh, did he, did he, did he was it a prince that wanted to pay millions of dollars? <laughs> in fact, I was waiting for him to ask for money, but he never did that. I was so impressed that not only was it somebody out of country, but it was somebody from so far away that was a listener to our show. I was so flattered by that. And my guess is you are too, when you hear from somebody that is, you're right. They, they come from uh, areas or countries that you never thought would even know of you you or your show, and well, it was wonderful. I'm particularly flattered when they send me millions of dollars, but I never did get <laughs> it. I never did get the check. <laughs> no, Bear, but no, I, no, you're I, right. You're right. You're out, the out, Wherever you are in the world, you can find John Aquaviva's show. And what is the website for that again? Um, that is uh, carolinacatholicradio.org. What were you going to say, John? Uh, I, I, f- I forgot what I okay. was going to say well, let's, about... Let's let's dig okay, let's ahead. dig back let's dig into what the first step should be for a man who's you know maybe they were a, a, an athlete in high school or college but they've they've let yeah. other things kind of crowd into their life um, what what would you say to a man who who has never really been physical or a man who is wants to get back in shape can you give them three or four or five steps because you can't go from A to Z yeah. and in fact no, it can't. isn't even about going to A to Z it's about go, about going to A to B and B to C because at about going from F to G, you think, wow, 
I feel better about myself just psychologically and emotionally. And I'm, wow, I didn't know I had a muscle there or, you know, I didn't know I could reach that far now that I've lost some weight. Can you, can you give us a program of how people can start, start to, men and women can start to make that yeah, this is universal for sure for both men and women. There's a couple things you can do, and you kind of hinted to it. Uh, there's an old saying about a marathon. You, yeah, the marathon is 26.2 miles, but you can't really run it without taking that first step. And that is what would my, my suggestion would be for people who want to start on this path of getting in better shape. I would suggest this, though. There's a lot of people who want to get in shape, and they make drastic changes in their daily lives regarding food intake, regarding their diet, and regarding their fitness plan. But my suggestion is to to focus on one of those before the other. If you do both of them, it's certain that both of them will fail eventually. So while one may follow the other, my suggestion is to start a fitness plan, but talk to a professional. And what I mean by that is you can hire a personal trainer. Almost all of them are degreed and or certified within a uh, respected field. And you can meet with them for relatively low amount of money. But even still, I would ask the client to think about what is their health worth? What is their body worth? It's priceless. So to pay $70, $75 to meet with a personal trainer for an hour would be well spent. Versus going out to eat. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. We spent we sometimes exceed seventy five dollars just on shopping with you know on Amazon that evening. So that's one of the things I would suggest is have them put you on a plan because that's what I do. I teach a class called Strength and Conditioning, and it's all bare about exercise prescription. I teach my students so when they go work at that local fitness club, when they go work at that PT clinic or OT clinic, whatever they're going to do. I teach them all these steps in exercise well, prescription. Well, let me tell so, you about so, that. I, I resonate with that, John, because, you know, like a couple of things. One is um, incremental steps. Like when I yep. pedaled my bicycle across the United States, that was one pedal stroke at a time. When I paddled right. my surfboard across the Molokai Channel, one of the most treacherous channels in the world, 30 miles between the island of Oahu and Molokai, I uh, did one paddle stroke at a time. But when I was right. training for my world championships, I had a fitness trainer, and you know why? Well, actually, even even when I wasn't training uh, for those, um, because I knew I had an appointment, and if I didn't show up, he was <laughs> he was going to call me. It was just the fact that he made me that that I had that appointment. That kind of when I was needing to kind of get back into the rhythm of things, I, I had a fitness trainer. But but I really do believe that you you, you thought about starting. I, I when I'm when I'm in a situation where I'm getting back in shape, I start with the physical. Uh, fitness and then after two or three days ago why am i eating this food because i, I just i just walked five thousand uh steps today an extra five thousand steps today or about fifteen thousand steps in my 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 fitbit and now i'm gonna eat this this uh dessert you know what i mean so the sure. thing about eating is it's a restrictive thing the thing about exercise it's a proactive thing and it's That's good right. when they go hand in hand but i think it you think you're right it usually if all you're doing is saying i'm going to restrict what i'm eating you're going to fail within a few days or a few weeks but if you fit if you're putting in the proactive effort of uh, 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 of of working or swimming or lifting weights or whatever it is playing is a good thing to do too just go out and play at absolutely. something absolutely um, then, then you're they're saying i've did all this work why do i want to why do i want to lose out on what i just did by eating this that's right there's an old saying that we have that uh, a lot of people in the fitness world always share with people and that is you can't out run or out work out a bad diet and so as as you just mentioned and as i alluded to it's a really good idea to focus on your fitness first but it's natural that your diet will follow amen but i would suggest visiting somebody and the the other thing that i would suggest is research is crystal clear on this bear that in a lot of cases regarding all aspects of health everything from energy expenditure to burning uh, calories um, at rest after the workout's done, the heart strength yeah. is resistance training. Right. So in other words, a lot of people think they need to start working out and they think about having to do a 45 minute run or get on the elliptical machine for 40 minutes, whatever the case is. All that's great, it really is. But what I would suggest is telling the professional, 
here's how much time I have and maybe split it in half between cardio and resistance training. And that will give the best of both worlds. Literally, you'll get benefit from both cardio and resistance training and you'll feel better than you ever have after just one week. You know, yes, exactly. You know, I remember when I was about 30 years old, I was working for a corporate office and uh, we would have our coffee breaks and our lunch breaks and the coffee breaks in the morning usually involved a hot sticky roll and, and lasagna at lunch in the in the employee dining room and when the Lord I heard it as clear as a bell not a not a voice but in my soul I heard, heard the Lord say you're my walking man go walk yeah and so I took my break times to walk and those break times became time of, of talking with the Lord and so I, I had a Garmin uh, watch now for over 20 four years, something like that, where I knew how many miles I was putting on every day, 50 miles a week. And I knew, now I use my Fitbit, I have it on right now. Uh, but it's also true that I, I know, so I put a lot of miles on, especially beach walking is a good workout. Um, right. uh, because that, that is that does build your muscle. And, and, and leg muscle is what is a lot of times where testosterone is first kind of released is getting strong there. But, John, you know what I do is I try to play. Now, the way I get my strength training in is I stand up, paddle, surf. And it's cool because you get a cardio, but you're, you're using your I, – I, I don't know of a – in other words, I don't know of a, a better exercise than stand up, paddle, surfing. Uh, you can stand up paddle also, but surf means you're doing that cardio thrust to get into a big wave, paddling hard to get out. But um, it's it, I don't know anything that's gotten me. I don't go to the gym anymore because I'm just so fit. So a lot of people have gotten into the whole stand up paddle, sup. I encourage people to try to try that. But find something that you enjoy doing. Try. Go go play. Um, find something you like to you know like to to do in the park but 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 go play but i really affirm what you're saying if you have the financial resources and uh hire a fitness trainer to, to get the ball rolling and then check in That's with him right. regularly uh we got about a minute another minute or two john where can they find you you can find me at carolina catholic radio Dot org, or they can find me at catholic body image.com you know my wife cindy is such a great great athlete and, and totally fit and her eating regimen is is even better much better than mine but uh she has a friend and they just call each other and say you want to go well, let's go hike this mountain let's you know hawaii we got great hiking thing they they hike so much but the, if you don't have a fitness trainer find someone to work out with that's, that's right. really what you need find a friend who will go go for that daily walk with you or someone who will go to the gym or you have some weights in the garage and you don't need a lot but resistance training yeah. and all that stuff that we talked about, John, that's going to give them a spiritual strength, too, because spiritual strength is developed through resistance training. I know for myself, in the martial arts, there's always that statement about how you train from the outside in and then from the inside out. So yep. men, women, get fit, get strong, cherish the temple of the Holy Spirit that God's given to you. And your and your website again, John, is what? Carolina, or sorry, uh, um CatholicBodyImage.com. He's got so many, but that's one you can remember. <laughs> CatholicBodyImage.com. And we want to invite everybody to come to our um, our great uh, Deep Adventure Quest Luau and Retreat, December seventh through the eleventh here in Waikiki Beach. We're going to be all of our all of our our retreat elements are outside. Uh, there's plenty of time for fun in the sun. Uh, children can come. We want Ohana to come. So be sure and, and join us here in Waikiki, December 7th through the 11th. You can find out more at deepadventure.com. You know, we say here in Hawaii, may the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. That's kind of the way we say goodbye, but I thought you might like to know how it's said in the Hawaiian language. Nakahana uka uhana hemalele aloha oi. May the breath of the Holy Spirit aloha you. Aloha! Hey man, I don't want you to miss out on your free stuff at deepadventure.com. Go there and subscribe to our weekly email newsletter. You get free video content, including the Bear Wozniak radio show, video version on YouTube before it even airs on EWTN. And you can follow us on all of our social media. Go to deepadventure.com and subscribe. Get your free stuff. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to press the subscribe button and ring that little bell. Don't miss out.